Let's develop a simple to-do list app with C# -sharp and WPF. Let's start by opening Visual Studio. And let's create a new project. I'll choose WPF application and next. Let's give a name to the project and create it. First, let's create a class for a to-do item. Let's make it a public class. And I want two properties in this class. The description of the to-do item and a boolean field that says if it's done or not. Let's now create a constructor to initialize the description as an empty Next, let's create our to-dos class. As opposed to this class, the to-do class, the to-dos class will only have one object and will contain all of the to-do objects. It will also serve as a view model for our UI. So let's make it a public class. And since we will use this class to bind things from the XAML UI, we need it to inherit from I notify property changed. And since we're now inheriting from this interface, we have to implement all of its methods. I now create a method to invoke this event whenever needed. And all we're going to do in this method is invoke the property changed event. Let's now create a collection to hold all of our to-do objects. We will use two different things to do it. First, we will define a private field, and then we will define a public property that will wrap the private field. The getter of the property will simply return the private field, and the setter will assign value to the private field. But whenever this property changes, we also have to call on property changed. One last thing we will implement here is a constructor. And in this constructor, we'll initialize our to-dos with some objects. Next up is the XAML code. We will define two rows in our grid. One for the main list of the to-dos and the other for a button to add new to-dos. In the first row, we'll have a list view. And in the second row, we'll have a stack panel in which we'll later place a text box and a button. As item source for the list view, I want to use this property, the all to-dos, as this will give us easy access to view all of the to-dos we currently have. And we will represent each of the to-dos as a checkbox. Using a checkbox will allow us checking each of the elements as well as displaying its description. The thing is that to display checkboxes inside a list view, we're going to need an item template. And inside the item template, we're going to need a data template. And here, inside our data template, we can place our checkbox. For checkboxes, we have the isChecked field that determines if the checkbox is checked or not. And this needs to be decided by this field in each of the to-do elements. 
So we're going to use binding. And the other property we need in our checkbox is the content. And this will determine the text that's displayed next to the checkbox. This text needs to be determined, of course, by this field, the description of the to-do item. So once again, we're going to use binding. So notice that I used two types of binding here. First, I used this binding to bind all of the rows of the list view. And this binding was to the collection of all of the to-dos. Now for each of the to-dos, I had two other bindings to determine if it's checked and also to determine the text. We now want to add here a text box and a button to allow the addition of new to-dos. And I'll give a name to this text box so I can access it from the code behind. And let's also give it a fixed width so that its width won't change according to the current content. And we also need a button to take the text in the text box and make a new to-do out of it. And of course, we're going to need a click event to respond to clicks on this button. I now place the caret on the function that we connected to the click event and then click on F12. And as you can see, it created this function in the code behind. What we want to do in this function is create a new to-do object. And let's also initialize its description field. Now the value for the description needs to come from the text box. And that's why we gave a name to the text box and it's this name. So we simply need to take the text out of the text box. And now that we have this new to-do, we can add it to the list of to-dos. And that's when we're going to create the one object of this class, of the to-dos class. So let's create the reference to this object. And here we're going to add the new to-do to the to-dos object. And of course we'll use its all to-dos property. And of course, we must not forget to initialize this object. One last thing we need to do is to set the data context of the UI to our to-dos object. Let's try to run our program. And here we can see all of the initial to-dos. We can check any of them. And of course, we can also add new to-dos 